the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, welcome to our Mass today. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen a reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. Spirit of 
a reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, a man, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go to Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's first reading uh, from the book of Numbers, this is, this is something that happened when the Israelites were crossing the desert you know, into the Promised Land. So there was a gathering of the elders and God took some of the spirit that he had bestowed on Moses and gave it you know, to the 70 elders, you know, shared it with those 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. You know, except there were two men who were not in the gathering, you know, Eldad and Medad. Yet the spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied. So then somebody complained to Moses that they were prophesying even though they were not in the initial gathering. So Moses did not stop them. And rather, he said, Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord bestow his spirit on all. And then something similar happened in today's gospel. So John saw somebody driving out demons in Jesus' name. But this person was not 
one of the followers of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, do not prevent him. Whoever is not against us is for us. So I think one thing we can realize from these readings is that our God is so generous in bestowing his graces, his spirit to everybody. People just have to be open to that grace. And then also we realize that our God is not competitive. He is not in a competition to gain our attention or to force us to do or say anything. God proposes, but he does not impose. He simply presents himself to us. He offers his love, and he generously bestows his mercy, and he gives his life for us, for our salvation. He also has given us a moral code and a way of life that will bring us peace and joy. And in order to to help us to follow and live that moral code, he shares his graces to us, most notably through the sacraments. So then it's up to us to respond yes or no to receiving these graces, this spirit from God, and to conform our will according to God's will. So I think that's something great for us to meditate on this week, realizing that God is not bound by by rules or by the institutions that we have. His grace, his mercy. No, it's, it's way beyond that. No, he offers it no, for free. And like what I said, no, God proposes. No, he does not impose. So then it's up to us no, to, to be able to open ourselves to that, to be in relationship with God. Yeah? So I would continue to encourage you to develop your relationship with God, to appreciate God's generosity and humility, no, to fall in love with God even more. Uh, And by doing so, you may be able to use these gifts of the Spirit to give glory to God and to help your brothers and sisters. Dear parishioners, uh, this past week, I've been listening to a particular radio station, and you might be listening to the same radio station where they've been conducting their annual pledge drive. And I really appreciate the way they're doing it. They would, instead of like hardcore marketing, they would focus on what they, the values that they had as a radio station. And they would present them to their listeners. Uh, for example, uh, that they, they offer fair and balanced news reporting, informative programming, and wholesome entertainment. Uh, so they offer to their listeners what they thought was important. Well, for them, first of all, as a radio station, and then it was up to the listeners. Uh, to see if they had the same values and then to support and give you know, to their pledge drive. And it was interesting because then, and I know even from previous years, they would always reach you know, their goal. You know, people would be generous. Uh, so in that vein, I would like to announce that today we begin this year's annual Diocesan Appeal, or ADA. And the theme for this year is Open Our Hearts to Christ in the Year of St. Joseph. So the ADA, and many of you might already know this, supports our diocese in Davenport and the different offices and the services that they offer. Uh, For example, the vocations office, which supports our seminarians, the education and formation of our seminarians. Uh, This summer, we had Deacon Dale Mallory. He was here, and he, with God willing, will be ordained a priest in June of next year. And also Deacon Ben Snyder, who had been here before that, we also have this year one of our own parishioners uh, one of the, from one of the families here in our parish, uh, William Keating. Uh, he is studying in Loras College for College Seminary up in Dubuque, and he is one of our seminarians. And the ADA helps support his education as well. Other offices you might be familiar with in the diocese, the tribunal office, which helps with wedding preparation and annulments, we have a social action office, which is very active and does many things uh, to promote social justice. We have an immigration office that helps people have their paperwork in order. You know, that's a great service that we offer through our diocese. We have a multicultural ministry office as well. 
The goal for our parish this year is around $95,000, which is less from last year, and that's because our parish income is slightly less as well. Last year's ADA for our parish actually gave us a surplus of around 15,000, and any surplus beyond the goal goes back to the parish. Uh, so please consider your generous contribution to this year's ADA. If you gave last year, then you would have received or you will be receiving a letter uh, within the next few days. We also have a website where you can make your donation online. So once again, I invite you to give in order to, to support these efforts of our diocesan church and to help keep the Catholic faith and Catholic values alive in Southeast Iowa. And now together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We trust in God's love and providence, so we turn to him now and offer our prayers. For Pope Francis, May God preserve his health as he leads the church in wisdom and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may God bless them with integrity in protecting the dignity of life, especially the aged and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those weighed down by sin, May God give them courage in repenting and the grace to trust in his mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the love of Christ shine through us in our work of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked by the sign of faith, may Christ welcome them to his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim Hilgendorf, Betty O'Brien, Betty Helwig, and for the parish of St. Patrick, whom we remember in a special way at today's Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we offer you these prayers and we trust that you will grant them according to your will. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.